Alright, so I want the player character to be able to attack the enemy characters now. Um, that's important, but there's one problem. Um, it's possible during gameplay that the frame rate goes to such a point where the weapon between one frame and the next doesn't actually come into contact with another collider. The collider ends up between where the weapon is on the two frames. And to fix that problem, uh, we're going to use a ray cast to, um, I've added two points here. I'm calling it base weapon point and tip weapon point. We're going to do a ray cast between these two points and also between the point uh, that the base is at now and where it was last frame, and where the tip is at now and where it was last frame. That way we get the sort of C-shaped collider. Um, and that way if the enemy falls between, say, the tip uh, between two frames or the base between two frames, just in case it's, uh, we're too close and it's this tall skinny enemy, um, then it will still uh, uh, hit. Now, until there's a way, and if there is a way, if somebody knows of a way, let me know. But until there's a way to check an entire uh, uh, dynamic polygon based on the positions of where the weapon is now and where it was before, and check inside that dynamic polygon, um, this seems to be the best way that I've been able to figure out to get the hits to uh, to work even at lower frame rates, which tends to happen on mobile devices uh, if there's lots of stuff going on in the game. So I have a script here um, uh, on the player weapon. Um, we're going to attach the base point and the tip point. Uh, and then we have our last base position, last tip position. Whether or not we're checking for an attack hit, that's going to be called from an animation event. Uh, attack random and, and uh, our animator. Um, so basically what this is going to do, on a, a, an animation event we're going to start attack. That's going to first choose an attack random number. Now this is important because I want to make sure that on each swing of the sword, enemies are only hit once. This is going to check every single frame during the attack, uh, the apex of the of the swing, and I don't want an enemy to be hit twice or three times. So uh, we choose a random number that will assign to the enemy, so that if the enemy uh, gets hit again with the same attack, it doesn't actually register as another hit. We're also going to set attack hit to true. Uh, at the end of the attack we're going to call stop attack also from an animation event set attack hit to false and reset the uh, base and tip point position the last base position and last tip position to uh, vector 30 during a uh, check attack hit we call this every frame and if we're currently checking attack hit we're going to do a ra uh, call this raycast function attack raycast between the weapon base point position and the tip point position. Now that's the weapon itself, so in this case the sword, the uh, entire length of the sword. Um, and then uh, if the last base position is not zero or the last tip position is not zero, then we're going to do the same thing between the last base position and the current base position and the last tip position and the current tip position. That way the first frame that check attack hit is uh, called, these two will not run. Uh, and finally, during that um, every frame uh, function, we're going to set the last base position, tip position to the current positions. The attack raycast function takes two positions and it gets a, an array of raycast hits. Um, that way, if there's multiple enemies in there, we will get them all. Um, it gets the distance, which is the magnitude between uh, the end position minus the start position. And we do that ray cast all from position one to position two with the distance. And for each one, we're going to at this point get the hit information and just print the name of the hit. I just realized though that since I'm not doing with colliders, I'm doing with ray cast, I do need to add a layer mask to the ray cast um, hit. If you look at the manual, which I've been doing right here, it does take a layer mask. So I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to call a uh, attack layer mask. Now if you want to be very specific uh, you might also be adding uh, enemy hit points especially if you got like some sort of octopus creature uh, you might want to have enemy hit points in which case um, you could uh, uh, add that layer here as well. Um, so in our script we just need to choose the layer we want to interact with. So right now it's interacting with nothing. We want to interact with the enemy. There we go. So I hit Mushroom Monster right there, and he hit me back. 
Alright, let's uh, see what we got here. Um, and then I'll show you the scripts. Keep an eye on the console over here. We have this enemy health script. Should take about three hits to actually kill the enemy. Dodge that first magic attack. Hit him once. Hit him twice. And hit him. Oops, missed. There we go. Got him. So he's negative. He died. All these turned off, and he's a goner. If we had a system with experience, we would have passed experience to the player, checked for level up, and all that good stuff. In player weapon, we had start attack and stop attack. Those are working just fine. Um, we're basically finding the enemy, and we pass that along to enemy movement, and got hit. Uh, that basically takes the make sure it's the, um, that the last hit random is not the same as the current random number, and if it's not, then we set the last hit random to be the random number so that we don't attack uh, this enemy twice in one swing of the sword. Uh, we compute the damage between damage minimum and damage maximum. Now if you have armor class or any other sort of modifiers and all that good stuff, you do the logic somewhere in here. Um, if we're invoking check for attack, we want to cancel that uh, and then reset it for attack time. That way, if uh, the enemy is about to attack, we don't instantly attack in the middle of the uh, got hit animation. Um, if you do want like a retaliatory attack, then you'd likely uh, add logic for that in the next section, which is the receive damage on enemy health. Uh, and that function on an enemy health takes the damage, which is a float, detracts from the hit points. If it's less than zero, we call death. If it's more than zero, we just call got hit. Currently got hit only does this, uh, sets the trigger for the animation. If you want a retaliatory strike, then you'd probably set this here, and maybe you would uh, set um, uh, cancel this invocation and set attack time for zero, which would be instant. Uh, and chances are you're right next to the player, so we do an, an instant retaliatory hit. If we're death, then we want to set the trigger for the animation to do the death animation. Broadcast death actions on all the scripts, so any script that, on this character that has death actions function will uh, run. We'll set the rigid body to is kinematic and uh, set the uh, capsule collider to false. Turn off that collider. Um, the scripts do have like look at target, death actions just disables it, um, death actions disables, uh, enemy cast magic, um, walk back it disables it but before that it makes sure that we cancel the invocation of check distance if we're doing it currently. Um, and uh, that's it. And the player, or the enemy dies, rather. So, obviously, this is a very simplistic uh, version. You're going to need more um, logic for more advanced games with experience and, and saving the game and all that. But for this tutorial, that's pretty much it. And I hope you can see where you would add more logic for all that stuff. Um, uh, so, yeah, let me know if you have any questions.